real quick before you restart, before you resume working on the quest assignment, um, just just a couple of points as I was grading the labs. For the most part, people did pretty well. There's some things I want to point out um, as far as just wording goes. This right here is a resistor. It has a property called resistance. It has, this resistor has resistance. The resistance of this resistor is 100 kilo ohms. Same thing with capacitors. People are using the words capacitance and capacitor interchangeably. That's not correct. A capacitor has a property called capacitance. A capacitor is a device that has the capacity to store electric charge, okay? Um, so be careful with that because as we move forward, and, and this is like big kid physics, so you should be using the correct terminology, just like you shouldn't be eating in my classroom. Um, you should be using the correct terminology uh, whenever you're answering, answering these FRQs. And whenever you go to college, you definitely want to be using, because we've had experience with the basics. You should be able to use the vocabulary that's, that's with the basics. Some other things, um, real quick. As I increase the voltage, the electrons flow. When I stop increasing the voltage, the electrons stop flowing. It was as simple as that. Many questions. What happens after you make the changes and everything's constant? The electrons stop flowing. The capacitor is charged, right? Um, people answered, what's the, does the voltage change? No, the voltage doesn't change because that's what we have control over. No. You don't have control over the voltage of the capacitor. You have control over the voltage of the battery. And then the, the capacitor, the voltage across the capacitor, yes, it will be the same as that of the battery, but you don't directly control the voltage across the capacitor. You control the voltage of the battery. And when I increase the battery to positive 5 volts on this terminal, the positive charge here attracts electrons, leaving the top plate positively charged. And then it pushes electrons out. And as electrons move off of this guy, the, like, the positive charges here attract electrons as well. And electricity flows. And you can see that. That's the whole point of the, that part. You can see that with the arrows, with the negative symbols in them. The electricity is flowing. The electrons are flowing counterclockwise here. But they stop flowing once, once these two are at the same electric potential, right? Just like... Just like uh, my microphone here and my keyboard here are at the same gravitational potential. So they're not going to flow towards each other or anything, right? They're at the same gravitational potential. They're not going to move. If you're at the same electric potential, charges aren't going to move, right? Because remember electric potential. Remember this. Potential energy per unit of charge. If there's no potential energy per unit of charge, then they're not going to do anything. They're just going to sit there, okay? Okay. If I disconnect the battery, I now have locked in the amount of charge here. So no matter what I do, that amount of charge will not change. I have the same amount of charge, right? It doesn't change. I can change the electric field. And remember, electric field, and I'll talk about this in a second, is due to charge density, not total charge. People thought that they were going to get, um, that they were going to get, how do I do it? Oh, wait, no one is connected. People, people were saying that they're going to get different electric fields whenever I change the plate area with the battery connected. With the battery connected, the charge density doesn't change. The amount of charge, total charge does, but the charge density does not. Charge density is, gonna, is not going to change because as I increase the plate area, yes, I increase the capacitance just because I have more space to put the charges. But, but... But notice that the density of the electric field lines didn't change. And so the electric field strength didn't change. I just have more electric field because now I have more charges that have more potential energy, right? So the field strength, the density of those field lines doesn't change. It just, the total volume gets bigger or smaller, okay? Also, if I, if I do this though, notice the charge density does change, right? So how am I supposed to, and notice that I have very different behavior when I have the battery disconnected, right? Connected or disconnected, very different behavior. Voltage is changing here, connect the battery. Voltage is not changing because it's connected to the battery. Charge changes here. Charge does not change here, okay? 
So the, the lab is supposed to introduce you to all this and have you kind of figure it out. But the culmination, the understanding that you can glean from that and use to help you solve the problems that you're working on the quest is, working on today, which will extend to tomorrow whenever we do dielectrics when we start throwing insulators in between capacitor plates, which is where we're going. These are the equations that you want to keep in mind. Okay, the equations for capacitance on the formula sheet are capacitance is Q over delta V. The capacitance is the charge per, per um, volt that you can store on a capacitor. It's not written like this, just so you know. It's written as delta V equals Q over C, but it means the same thing, obviously. C is also epsilon naught times A over D. I put a red star for the formulas that are actually on your formula sheet, so you need not remember them. Um, this one's on your formula sheet, this one's on your formula sheet, this whole thing. It's written in a different way, but it is on your formula sheet. The potential energy stored in a capacitor, written on your formula sheet in this way. One half Q delta V, and if I take my Q and solve it for this in capacitance, Q is C delta V, and plug it in, I get one half C delta V squared, right? Um, those are on your formula sheet. This is an equation that you're going to be needing to use when you do capacitors. The potential difference across a capacitor plate is equal to the electric field times the dis uh, separation distance of the plates. This is not on your formula sheet. This is the delta V equals the negative integral of E dot dr. You can do that integral every single time you see a parallel plate capacitor, or you can just say, well, the electric field's constant, E dot dr is going to be in the same direction, or anti-parallel, either parallel or anti-parallel. The magnitude, just forget about the negatives. And then when you integrate the distance, the displacement vectors from plate to plate, you just get total distance D. So delta V is just going to be E times D. You want to know that. You want to know that so you don't have to do that integral every single time, even though it's not a difficult integral. Ed has potential. What's that? Ed has potential. Yes. And you do too. Aww. <laughs> Um, also, you, you're going to want to use this equation whenever you're analyzing what's going on with the capacitor as you make these modifications. Remember, we defined area charge density and area mass density whenever we did um, uh, center of mass stuff and rotational inertia stuff. It's just thing per unit area. And thing per unit area, here's charge per unit area. So we can solve that for the charge on a capacitor plate is simply the charge density on the capacitor plate times the area. And since the electric field strength is equal to sigma over epsilon naught. That's charge density over epsilon naught. I can create more electric field lines by, again, uh, increasing the plate area of my capacitor. But it's not going to change the char charge density if I have it arranged such um, in a certain way. And if I don't change the charge density, then I don't change the electric field. I might create more electric field lines, which means I would have had to do work in order to establish that configuration, but the electric field is due only to the charge density. So that's charge per unit area. If I have double the area, but I have double the charge, charge per unit area is still the same. So the electric field is still the same. Okay. Um, and remember, this isn't on your formula sheet either. Sigma over epsilon naught, that's something you want to remember. But it is found using a Gaussian symbol, cylinder on an infinite sheet of charge. So you can either do that problem every single time. Let me make sure it's not on there. Yeah, it's not. You can use a Gaussian cylinder to determine the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge and then, and then double it because you got two capacitor plates creating electric fields in the same directions, or you can just remember that the electric field is sigma over epsilon. And here's the, the catch. Whenever you, because these are very common problems. You have a capacitor plate and then you increase, you connect it to the battery. You either disconnect the battery or you leave it connected and then you change something about it. How does this other thing change? Those kind of questions, these are the equations. If you're a math brain, these are the equations that you want to be thinking about. How they change as I change other things. Notice the black stars here. These equations are not written up here as they are going to appear on the formula sheet. Those we're actually going to have to get to tomorrow. Everyone's listening, right? I see a lot of people looking at their computers. I'm listening. Okay. Are you looking? You're looking. Yeah. 
So these are not written like this on your formula sheet. They're written with dielectrics, meaning the, the insulators that you put between capacitor plates that then adjust things. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow. That's going to be the last part of our lesson on electric potential and capacitance. Um, so those just get modified by a, a factor. There's just a symbol that includes a factor. That factor is equal to one when you're dealing with a vacuum or air. So that's why we haven't dealt with it yet. But real capacitors don't have a vacuum or air between them, useful ones anyway. And so we'll have to modify these slightly, but it's not gonna be a huge deal. However, you are gonna have to say, okay, I have a capacitor that has a certain configuration. If I slide an insulator in between the capacitor plates, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen when it's connected to a battery? What's gonna happen when it's not connected to the battery? When it's connected to the battery, the charge can change, right? If you have it connected to a battery and then you modify the capacitor as it's connected to the battery, the charge can flow into or off of the capacitor based on what you're doing because it's connected to the battery, the source of charge. If, it's, if you charge the capacitor, then disconnect it from the battery, the charge on the plates cannot go anywhere. And so that capacitor is now charged. And, that, and, and so um, Q would be constant, right? If it's connected to the battery, delta V is constant. Because as long as you let the, the charge flow and then come to a stop, the voltage on the capacitor will be the same as the voltage on the battery. If it's not connected, if, it, that's as, if it's connected to the battery. If it's not connected to the battery, then delta V can change, but Q can't. And then these equations will tell you, if you use them, what's going to happen with everything else. Um, that's how you can deal with it mathematically. That's how you can deal with this stuff mathematically. I like also thinking about it conceptually. So let me just, just a little spiel here, and then you'll have the rest of the period to work on the quest assignment. Okay. So I got this charged capacitor plate. Let's say, let's, let me reset it. Show everything. I'm gonna bring my voltmeter out. And then I'm gonna charge the capacitor, charge a stop flowing, and then I'm gonna disconnect it. So the amount of charge, any equation that has Q in it, Q is now gonna be constant, okay? So if I change the separation distance, I'm changing D. Right? I'm changing D, but I'm also keeping Q constant. Epsilon naught and the area are constant, so that means delta V must also change. Right? Delta V is proportional to the distance. Right? The electric field is going to be constant as I do this as well because the charge density is constant. See how everything starts to relate? Okay. The, what's that? Yeah. Notice what does change. The voltage changes. Why does the voltage change? This is the conceptual understanding that you want to have. Why does the voltage change? What is voltage? It's potential energy per unit of charge. It's related to potential energy. What do you have to do to separate a positive and negatively charged plate? Work. You have to do work. What happens when you do work? When you do something like that? You store energy. So now I have more energy per unit of charge. Just like lifting an object off the ground to a greater height. More energy per unit of charge, more electric potential difference between the two, right? So that's why the voltage changes. And if you're not connected to the battery, the voltage can change. If you are connected to the battery, the voltage cannot change. So what happens? The charge on the capacitor changes. And because the charge changes, the, the charge changes, but I'm not changing the area. The charge density increases or decreases. So the electric field increases or decreases. Is that all making sense? Is it tying everything together here? It's good stuff, right? It's good stuff. Hopefully you at least figured a lot of this out while you're doing the lab, but you want to be able to do this because uh, the, these are real, real common problems when it deals with, when dealing with, when learning capacity. Since there's no questions, I'm just gonna. I figured it out. Oh really? Yeah. What was your question? Just in case anyone else had it. Like, as you, as, as you like bring it apart and as it keeps going out, uh, like the electric field gets weaker and weaker. So how does that indicate that? The electric field doesn't get weaker, as long as the area of the the plate area is much bigger than the the separation distance. Because remember, we're 
we model these as infinite sheets. I know it's not literally an infinite sheet, but if you take a, a real capacitor, like, wait, that's a good question. I'm glad you brought that. You take an actual capacitor, this is one that came out of a camera flash, a disposable camera. I think it's a disposable camera. That guy right there. If I was to cut this and take out the capacitor plates, they're two foil sheets with a very thin layer of insulation between them, a little sheet of paper, paper-like material. I think it's paper. Um, very thin. And you roll it out, and it's probably it's that wide, so it's not very wide, but it's probably like this long. But the separation between them is a fraction of a millimeter, right? So this is just for demonstration purposes, but in a real capacitor, the space between them is very, very small, very small. And so it doesn't matter if you increase the separation distance as long as you have the same charge. If you have the same charge, then increasing the distance does not change the charge density, so it doesn't change the electric field strength. Right. If you have a connected dome, now you're allowing charge to flow in or out, out of the capacitor, and so as the charge density changes, then the electric field strength will definitely change. Cool beans? Right. You really want to understand this, because tomorrow we're going to go to a different simulation, and it's the same kind of thing, but then you'll have stuff that you can slide in and slide out. So in addition to all this stuff, you need to be able to say, well, when I slide, and they call it, when you put an insulator between two capacitor plates, it's called a dielectric. Whenever you insert the dielectric, what happens? Okay, those are the, that's going to be, it's exciting, huh? Yeah, it's exciting. It's like, it's like a dielectric. <laughs> it kind of, you can kind of think of that. Go ahead, Alex. It's effect on electric fields. You kind of say that it does that. If the plates in a parallel plate capacitor were, were not fixed, were they just... Yeah, they oh yeah. The fact that it's a yeah, if these guys weren't fixed, then there's definitely a force between the positive and negative charges, and they, and they would accelerate towards each other, for sure. Yeah. That's another reason. Dielectrics let us control capacitance, kind of like resistors let us control the current in a simple circuit. Um, but they also provide the spacing. They provide the... the, the the thing that prevents the plates from actually Is being attracted to each other. So why like parallel plates would kind of be better than spherical or cylindrical because all the forces would be balanced in a sphere and cylinder and it wouldn't actually be parallel if it weren't fixed. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting thought. I'm not sure exactly. Um, I just know that that uh, when you have like a cylindrical or a spherical capacitor, the electric field varies yeah. quite a bit as you go from one object to the other. Um, yeah. And then just the capacitance of that configuration isn't quite as much, but parallel plate pack capacitors make this equation possible, which makes the math much easier. And, uh, and they're just easier to construct. It's easier to slap two, two uh, foil sheets around a piece of paper and rolled up into a little tube that you can then put in a circuit, right? So it's an interesting idea, but I'm not really sure. Ask, ask Trenton. I'm sure he knows. Yeah, you, yeah, the forces would balance, but um, then you'd have gravity, gravitational forces. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be like, yeah, that would happen if you were... That would also be unstable equilibrium as well, too. So if you just nudged in one direction, then it would end up feeling a net force in that direction. Well, actually, no, I don't think it would. Never mind. I think that would be stable equilibrium. I don't know. I don't know. It's beyond the scope of this class. Therefore, I'm not going to address it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Ask your professor in college. Yes, sir. Yeah. So small. yeah. Okay. You, we can do that. Maybe on the next test. I thought you were gonna say turn two students into a capacitor. Yeah. Let me let me get my high voltage power supply here and have Gianni and Alex stand right next to each other. Let me charge one. <laughs> well, the quest assignment basically says the Earth is flat. Well, it is. Yeah. Don't let them tell you otherwise. <laughs> the Earth is most definitely flat. Speaking of the quest. All right. Bye, everyone at home. Work on your quest assignment. <laughs>